Hello, my name is Dr. Minde, and I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the duodenum. Duodenum is actually the shortest part of the small intestine and also <clears throat> the widest intestine. So it's the most predictably um, placed part of the small intestine. So generally it's the shortest, widest, and most predictably placed of the small intestine. Now, duodenum usually forms an elongated C. This C lies between L1 and 3 vertebra. So when in supine position, the C of the duodenum lies between L1 and L3 vertebra. Now, the lower limb of C extends further to the left of the midline than the upper limb. So from the C part, the lower limb of the C extends further to the left of the midline than the upper limb of the C. So the duodenum actually is above the limb umbilicus and described as having four um, parts. So this is the duodenum of so the first part that is first is the second part this is the third part the part goes slightly upwards so that's the seat of the duodenum so you have first part which is the superior part it's five centimeters long and usually starts as a continuation of um, the pylora so the duodenal end of pylora so the first part is a continuation pylorus and it's five meters long this portion is mobile and it's in the peritoneum. So it's intra uh, peritoneal and it's mobile. Now, the first two or three centimeters of this first part of the duodenum, you have to call the duodenal cup. Duodenal cup, first two or three centimeters of the first part of the duodenum. And the mucosa of this duodenal cup has folds, which we call rugae. And this rugae, that mucosal folds on the inner portion of the duodenal, uh, the duodenum. So, what are the relations of this first part of the duodenum? Remember, the transverse portion of the, the superior transverse portion. Of the so, what are the relations? Above and anterior to it is the ridge lobe of the liver. Then, above it but posteriorly is the epiploic foramen. So, this is the foramen that opens the lesser sac. Then, posterior to this first part of the duodenum. You have um, the inferior vena cava, gastrointestinal trunk, common bite and portal vein. So you have these structures posterior to the first part of the board. Inferior vena cava, gastrointestinal tree, CBD, and portal vein. Posterior inferior to the first part of the duodenum is the head of the pancreas. So if um, to look at this first of the duodenum, you can appreciate the seed posterior. Okay. To this first part of the duodenum, the liver is of the first part of the duodenum, and so on and so forth. Gastroduodenal artery again is posterior to the first part of the duodenum. So, what are the aspects of this another first part of the duodenum? We have um, peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease actually commonly occurs in this first part of the duodenum, and the ulcer will. Uh, can eventually erode the gastroduodenal artery, which is posterior to it. And when you erode an artery, it results to bleeding, which is what we call hemorrhage here. Then have common hepatic and hepatoduodenal lymph nodes that are to the first part of the duodenum. And lymph nodes can actually be visualized during an ultrasound. When endoscopic ultrasound is being done, you can also um, visualize the common bile duct, the distortion of common bile duct around this first of the duodenum. Remember, we said peptic ulceration occur here, and when the ulcer is on the rear wall, gastroduodenal artery is eroded, leading to hemorrhage. But when the ulcer is on the anterior wall, there is perforation, little free air within the peritoneal artery. So, anterior wall um, perforation by the ulcer leads to free air within the peritoneal artery. We go to the second part of the duodenum. So that's the, the vertical portion of the C. So it's long, it's 8 to 10 centimeters, and starts from the superior duodenal fracture and runs inferiorly to the L3 body. So it's from 1 to L3, it's 8 to 10 centimeters long. What are the relations of the second part of the duodenum? It's also called the descending part of the duodenum. So anterior to it, you have the root of the transverse mesocolon as well as the left of the liver and small intestine calls below. So anterior to the second part of the duodenum, you have root of transverse mesocolon at the midline, the left lobe of the liver above, and coils of the small intestines below. 
what structures are located posterior to this descending part of the duodenum? There is no peritum, and you will also find right kidney, the hilum of the right kidney, with the structures that are entering or leaving it, including the ureter and the blood vessels. So mainly posterior second parts of the duodenum, you have the right kidney hilum and the structures at hilum. Now to the descending part of the duodenum, you find right kidney and the right colic flexure. Right kidney and right um, uh, flexure of the colon. Then medial to this descending part of the duodenum, remember, you find head of the pants and the common bile duct fuel the pancreatic duct as they pierce the posterior medial wall of this second part of the duodenum at the amber of vata. So what are the clinical aspects of this part of the duodenum? Remember, the pancreas usually rests on the duodenal wall, the C of the duodenum. So the pancreas is resting on the duodenal wall. It can produce small filling defects when you do a contrast um, study, which we call a double contrast barium meal. So the pancreas on the duodenal wall gives a small fill defect. You have peptic ulcer of the second part of the duodenum. They can also occur, but less common than the ulcers in the first part of the duodenum. And this uh, PUD second part commonly occurs on the anterior and the lateral wall, and the first part where ulcers were mainly on the posterior wall. Then you have duodenal diverticular. So when the duodenum is actually the commonest site of the small intestine where diverticular occur, and the commonly occur on the middle wall of the second of the duodenum. So this diverticular can make endoscopic um, examination very difficult and can predispose to operation. Then we go to the part, third part of the duodenum. This is the low horizontal, is the horizontal part. So it starts at the in the duodenal flexure and in centimeters long. It runs the uh, uh, left, right, lower border of the three vertebra. So from the borders of three vertebra, and what the relations of this third portion of the duodenum? Anteriorly, you have your transmesal colon, the origin of the small wells, and you also have superior mesenteric vessels. So transmesal colon, small bowel, and superior mesenteric vessels. You can add superior mesenteric artery and vein anterior to the third part of the duodenum. What structures are posterior to the third part of the duodenum? So if you were to look at this third part, what structures are posterior to it? This image, you can add it. There is the vena cover, there is aorta, and you'll have branches of aorta and tributaries of inferior vena cover, okay, that will be posterior to it. Then you can appreciate the posterior wall muscles. So what are the structures on the posterior aspect of the part of the duodenum? The right ureter, right psoas major muscle, gonadal vessel, so either right testicular vessels or right ovarian vessels, inferior vena and abdominal A at the origin of inferior mesenteric artery, that's at A3. And there's uh, the head of pancreas. So this third part of the duodenum is inferior to the, the pancreas, but you can appreciate inferior vena cover posterior to it and the aorta as well as inferior mesenteric artery posterior to it. Now, remember, even the, from aorta, we have the gonadal sleeving, so the um, varian and testicular trees will be posterior relation to the third part of the duodenum. Until when free, you have the loops of jejunum. So the applied aspects of the third part of the duodenum, we said third part is potentially um, compressed between superior mesenteric vessels and abdominal aorta poorly. Remember, so mesenteric vessels are to it, and abdominal aorta is put to it. So this third part of the duodenum can be compressed between two vessels. And that leads to superior mesenteric artery syndrome. Superior mesenteric artery syndrome is intent obstruction of the third part of the duodenum. So again, remember this third part is at the level of L3 vertebra. So when you have a of the vertebral of L3 um, uh, vertebra may injure this the duodenum, although this is very rare. Lastly, the part of the duodenum, which is the ascending part. This is the test part, it's 2.5 centimeters long. And it's uh, to the left, the aorta, and superiorly and lateral. So it causes superiorly, and it's located to the left of the aorta. So what are structures posterior to this fourth part of the duodenum? Of the aorta, the left 
sympathetic trunk, left psoas major muscle, and left renal, or rather left kidney, as uh, left renal and left gonadal vessel. Those are the structures posterior to the fourth of the duodenum. The aorta, left sympathetic trunk, psoas major muscle, and left renal, as well as left gonadal vessels. Posterior lateral to the fourth part, we have the left knee and left ureter. So the left kidney and the left ureter are posterior lateral to the fourth part of the of the duodenum. And so to this, you have the lower border of the body of pancreas. So if you are to look at the um, this image, this is the part of the duodenum. So it's causes superior lateral and you can appreciate that here to it you have the kidney there you have the kidney vessels renal vessels adult vessels all these are posterior to it superiorly you can see the body of the pancreas is superior to the fat so if you go to back to the fat we have said Posteriorly, there is water, the sympathetic trunk, the left soul major, left renal, left gonadal vessels, and to laterally, you have the left knee and the left ureter. Then superior, you have the body of the crease. So we have what you call ligament of trees. Ligament of trees is just a double fold of the peritoneum. It's formed by the double fold of the peritoneum, duodenogeage flexure. And this ligament of trees may contain some smooth muscles. Therefore, we call suspensory muscle of the duodenum. The ligament of trades is at the duodenogenal flare and may contain smooth muscles to form suspensory muscle of the duodenum. It's an important landmark radiologically. Yeah, it's an important landmark in the radiological diagnosis of incomplete rotation and malrotation of the small intestine. So remember this uh, flexure is also a useful landmark surgically. Yeah, because you can use it to locate the inferior mesenteric vein. So, the duodenogenal flexure can be used surgically to locate the inferior mesenteric vein, and radiology it can be used to diagnose complete rotational rotation of the small intestine. Thank you very much.